Honestly, I can say today that I really thought that putting shorter cranks on people's bikes made them slower. I thought that if you, had, if you were riding 172.5s, you went to 165s, you wouldn't climb as well. That was my reality. That's what I thought. That's what I believed. Because I was looking at it, I'm like, oh, it's a better lever. It is a better lever. A longer crank produces more torque on the drivetrain than a shorter crank. But the crank is not the motor. We are the motor. We are what are moving the crank. Everybody ever put shorter cranks on ran better off the bike. And I was, I'm like, well, what's up with that? And what I, my initial thought was that it was reducing something called inspiratory muscle fatigue. So when you are bent over like this and your thighs are displacing your lumbar spine, every time the thigh comes up and the pelvis has to post you to rotate like that a little bit, it pulls on your quadratus lumborum muscle. The quadratus lumborum muscle is involved in respiration. When you inhale, it actually contracts and then as you exhale, it releases. And so my theory, which may or may not have some component why they run better, was that the tension that occurs as they come over the top of the pedal stroke, challenging that range of motion, posteriorly rotating that pelvis, was fatiguing these muscles and making it harder for them to run off the bike. Okay? Lamont came, Greg Lamont and I were working on a couple projects together, none of which ever came to fruition, but we did a couple things together, and he, was, and he, he came over with this kid, and we were sitting in the studio, and he said, what do you think about short, crank, short cranks? And I said, I think that if you like short cranks, I'd use them for triathletes, and my, 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 and my belief is that if you think short cranks are better, you will like short cranks. And if you think long cranks are better, you will like long cranks. Because that's really what I did believe. I couldn't understand how people like, you know, I, I don't know how Leonard Zinn could do it. I mean, all of these riders with these bottom brackets like that high, and they're just out there loving it, loving his long cranks. It doesn't make sense to me. But it worked, which defies, my, which defies logic for me, but also... Uh, suggested there was, I thought there was a psychological component. And so he said, if I was racing, I would be riding 145s. If I could go back and do it, I'd do it on 145s. He said, it, where it used to take me X amount of time to get back to my maximum power, with the shorter cranks, it takes me less time. And I said, well, good for you, Greg. You know, and I'm thinking in my head, he's just nuts. And then he said something that stuck with me. He said, well, would you rather do a deep or shallow squat? And all of a sudden, like my mind, I'm all about biomechanics. I'm always thinking about joint torque and joint moments. And all of a sudden it made sense to me. Of course, I would rather do a shallow squat. Why? Because we can produce more force. And when you look at professional cyclists who really don't make a big fuss about crank length, you'll notice that their backs look pretty bad. You know, good for them, not good for us, right? So if you look at my back, it's pretty flat, but their backs have this really cathodic curve to it. That is. That's an adaptive feature of professional cyclists who have spent a lot of time pedaling. Why? Because if my body is going to be able to create force, it knows that the joint shouldn't be so flexed, right? So if I ride like this, this joint's super flexed, not as much force. If I ride like this, this joint is less flexed. There's much more room here, more open hip. So when you look at these pros that have got, you know, people are like, oh, it's hamstring length. It isn't hamstring length, it's the lumbar spine. They have this massive amount of mobility that allows them to keep this really open. So they can be way down here like that, but their back, and my back doesn't even do it anymore, but their back is like bowed up, right? So we're not gonna use those guys as, as data points for what we're trying to achieve because it doesn't work. Then I started thinking about what happens with triathletes. Triathletes run and they have good posture. The muscles here are very strong. And because of that, their back doesn't bow as much, right? Because it can't. The muscle is muscular integrity. So when I'm fitting a triathlete, I watch. I look to see how much lumbar tension we're getting when I move them back and forth on the bike. What's really interesting is that the sweet spot that made me kind of famous for triathlon fitting is just prior to where the back is being impacted by the pedal stroke. Now, the consequence to that is that it adds weight to the handlebars so I would have to raise up the bars and make them less aerodynamic. Didn't matter, they still love me because they ran well off the bike. But getting shorter cranks on the bike solves that problem. I can get them into a position where they're more balanced, less, more balanced, more weight on the saddle without having the low back stuff, et cetera, et cetera.